Can music and texture really trick your mind into thinking food actually tastes different? Can the taste of a meal change depending on the nature of our environment? I'm about to enter the strange world of multisensory gastronomy. Super chef Joseph Youssef believes we are all synesthetes when it comes to eating and drinking. In fact, he's so convinced that he's set out to prove it. He's joined forces with Oxford University's Department of Experimental Psychology to create the Kitchen Theory Project. A bid to create the ultimate tasting menu designed to show that multisensory experiences are available even in a non synesthete like myself. So, Joseph, what yeah. are you doing here? Well, we're putting together a few courses for you to try out from our synesthesia menu. And the idea being, we want to see if, uh, if we can in some way, you know, augment, tweak, um, alter your perception of the tastes, mouthfeels and flavours that you're going to experience. That's really what this is kind of about. Cool. What we're looking for is really to see if some of the sensory um, tools that we use today will in some way alter your perception of the dishes. So in many cases, I think you'll probably taste the dish without any sensory cues and then we'll kind of add those in through sound, touch, smell, aroma. Yeah. While Joseph cracks on with the multi-sensory tasting menu, I've invited a very special guest to join me for this extraordinary lunch. James Wanerton is a synesthete, and like Philippa, his senses interact unusually, but his specific symptoms are very different. Colour is set for our synesthetic experience. Every word James hears and reads, not to mention the general sounds of the world around him, creates strong flavours in his mouth. I get inputs from all sorts, from sound, from, uh, from colour, uh, from touch, and it all adds to the flavour of whatever I'm eating. For example, James experiences specific taste sensations upon hearing the names of each different London underground station. Bond Street. Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's a bit like having something like hairspray sprayed right into your face. Right. St Paul's. That's not too bad, actually, because um, St Paul's uh, gives me the taste of similar to sprouts. In your synesthetic brain, it actually enhances the tastes that your brain is conjuring up yeah. as a result of the sounds that you hear. Yeah, see, it's a really weird sensation. And sometimes actually eating the real food is a disappointment because the synesthetic tastes are a lot nicer. So it must feel like you're constantly eating. Oh, yeah, it is. Does that affect your appetite? Um, appetite is a bit of a foreign word for me. If I'm hungry, the only way I know is if my stomach makes loud noises. No uh, way. So if, um, you know, I may, <clears throat> if I haven't eaten for days, and I have done that, um, I'll get very, I feel very, very weak. But I've got no, no f drive to eat food. Let's hope he's still hungry enough for our edible experiment. But experimental chef Joseph Youssef is on a mission to prove that we can all experience symptoms of synesthesia when it comes to taste. Along with Charles Spence, Professor of Experimental Psychology at Oxford University, he's knocked up a comprehensive multisensory menu which in theory should have sense-shifting qualities in non-synesthetes. In this case, me. Chin chin. Joining me in this culinary adventure is genuine synesthete James Wanerton. So, so sour. He's an aficionado of flavour and I'm fascinated to see how his experience compares to mine. Cheers. Let's get it down the hatch. I think we're ready. We've been promised that the main course will be a very touching experience. Okay. Wow. Marinetti wow. dish. Mm. Mm. So, before you uh, gobble it all down, I'm going to give you your um, something to play with. So we've got a bit of Velcro, got a bit of smooth, we've got a bit of felt, OK? What the chef recommends is that you fondle your cube Mm. Uh, while tasting the food from now on, <laughs> and just see if you find any, any correspondence between what you're tasting, the textures in your mouth and on the plate, uh, and the textures you have in your hand. So can the rough texture of Velcro really alter the flavour of food? What's it doing for you? No, it, it enhances the, uh, the, the nuttiness and the savouriness. Yeah. It makes it more nutty. Oh, wow, so I just have my first synesthetic <laughs> experience. Interestingly, both James and I experienced the same changes in taste. 
Could I really be part synesthete? Fantastic. It makes a surprising amount of difference, that. Mm -hmm. Does that for you? I would have thought there was enough going on in your brain. Yeah, I would, that's what I would have thought. But that does make a massive difference. Just enough room for dessert, and this time with a sprinkle of sonic seasoning. OK, gentlemen, your dessert. So what I'd like you to do is to put the headphones on uh, and then take a mouthful and think about the experience. Chef Joseph and Professor Spence believe that music can actually enhance and alter taste sensations in non synesthetes Let's find out if they're right. How's it for you, James? This first track is intended to enhance the sweetness of the dish. The, the different mix of textures. And that enhances it. It's um, sort of rich, rich sounds, as which goes with the chocolate. There's also um, something that's giving me the taste of pineapple, but it goes with everything there. It's absolutely brilliant. And wow. there's different tones in there, um, different loudness, which affects it as well. That's incredible, that. It seems Synesthete James is the model test subject. So if you're ready to continue with your dessert, I will change the uh, sonic seasoning and let's see what happens to the taste. The next track is intended to induce a sour taste. What's happened? I can see from the expression on your face, you're not happy. It just doesn't go, it doesn't go. So what taste are you getting out of the sound this time? Um, I'm getting a, a, funnily enough, a slightly meaty taste. It just doesn't go, it's... I've heard of savoury chocolate dishes, but never meaty desserts. Can I, can I, can I hear the meaty sound? It absolutely sound? ruins it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to see what's going on here. Oh. <laughs> For me, it's just right. Oh, no, no. Mmm. Chimes and strings and it's like spa music. I feel like I should be having a um, shoulder rub. Well, maybe next time. Professor Spence has observed that the majority of non-synesthetes do feel the desired effects. So maybe I'm just a bit of an odd bud. <laughs>